everybody and welcome to the 110 Rod Shop YouTube channel. Today we're going to start a very awesome video series on building a Traxxas Ultimate Hauler. As many of you know, we make a lot of different parts for the Traxxas Hauler, including the motorized bed kit. Um, we just released our version 2 kit, which is the Reefs Edition. It's got a lot of upgrades, some enhanced features. Uh, we really wanted to do it above and beyond to make this thing the ultimate scale hauler. Now, we've, uh, we've also released some different things like portal flip kits and a bunch of other parts, so we want to help everybody install those parts. We get questions all the time. We try to ask them or answer them as fast as they're asked. It doesn't always happen. So we said, hey, you know what? Let's make a really awesome video series to really show you all the details, um, all the expectations, what we were thinking as we designed this kit um, and you know the features that it offers and and the differences between the V1 and the V2. Um, we're going to be installing a lot of different parts on our ultimate hauler. Like I said, we want to show you how to build the track, ultimate Traxxas hauler out of your rig. Now, some of the parts that we're going to be installing that we make, obviously we're going to be installing our bed kit. We're going to show you how to break down all the hardware and how it all works with the shock, uh, short shock kit and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've got everything from magnetic mounts, our SIN conversion hubs to run the big SIN wheels to give it a really nice scale look. We're going to do a portal flip kit on it to bring that down and th uh, 30 millimeters. I'm going to show you all the different nuances to that. We've got our step kits, we've got our door handle kit, our vent kit. Uh, we're gonna do our new front bumper on there, including fog lights. It gives it that really sporty, nice, clean look. Um, we've got our single axle conversion kit we're gonna be putting on this rig. Like I said, don't get overwhelmed. We're gonna break this up in multiple videos to try to keep the install time and, and uh, get it more direct to the part that you're installing at that particular moment. Um, we're gonna put one of our radiators on there and show you how all that works. Um, we've got a Amazon 110 scale pro light bar. Now we do make a graphic bracket for this specific light bar that covers the holes in the top where your body clips used to go you know us we're not a big fan of body clips that's why we make the magnetic body mount kit um, the Traxxas ultimate hauler bed kit does come with the rear magnetic mounts we're going to show you how to install those but we're also going to go ahead and add our front mount to give it that really really scale look now this uh, light bar can be uh, bought on Amazon I'll get a close-up of that so you can see exactly which one it is um, and then always you can hit us up on a on Instagram and Facebook if you have any questions there um, um, we're going to be putting a Traxxas 2262 BEC inside the truck to help with the power of adding a 400 ounce Traxxas 400 servo, the red servo. The sock one does get a little bit weak um, after a, a, a lot of use as well as with the bigger wheels and tires so we go ahead and upgrade that to the red one. We're going to be putting the Traxxas uh, OE winch on the actual bed to pull the cars up onto the bed. And then we're even going to add a pro scale light kit from a Traxxas TRX4 Sport. Now this one does have individual LEDs which makes it a lot easier to adapt to the uh, tow truck so and we're even going to add in some parts that you may or may not have seen we've got a new visor that's going to be coming out that goes above the windshield we may wrap this dude in chrome I don't know we'll see and then we also got our new grill that we released many of you know we've got two different style grills our traditional classic grill and then we also have our sport grill this is kind of a combination of our of both it looks very much like a Peterbilt grill um, it's a very very clean nice uh, look you can paint it as with all of our parts these parts all, all uh, have the ability to paint they're all printed with some really high nylon manufacturing so the detail is there no lines none of that normal 3d print stuff that you see um, anybody that's bought our parts before understands the quality of our parts and what we put behind that and that's part of the reason why it takes us a little bit longer sometimes so we really appreciate everybody's interest we really are glad to have everybody here we know this video has been a long time coming and it's needed to happen so here it is we're going to show you how it's done we're going to start with the bed kit and then i'll drop the other videos right after that so stay tuned like and subscribe all right, now the first accessory we're gonna install on our ultimate hauler kit is going to be the motorized bed kit, right? That's the one that everybody loves and everybody likes. Um, whenever we ship our ultimate bed kit, you should pull it out of the package and it'll look similar to this. Um, it'll have zip ties holding the frame and the slider to the, uh, the lift mechanism so that it doesn't damage it during shipping and transportation. Um, you'll definitely wanna go ahead and, and make sure you cut all of these zip ties off. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those zip ties. We're gonna set our remotes to the side. These out of the way. And then you're gonna see a few more zip ties over here on the harness that hold the control module and the harness to the body of the, of the lift module. So we're gonna get those out of the way. And as you can see, the harness, really nice, clean, nice tech loom. Um, it's got split ends and I'll show you where those connect once we get this on the chassis of the truck here in a little bit. Now, a few things I wanna point out 
on our new version two kit is first off, our linear actuators are two and a half times the strength of the original ones in the V1 kit. And then also we have the, of course, Reef's upgraded servo winch uh, with the synthetic winch cable, very, very solid design. Now, one thing I wanna point out is a lot of people think that these uh, four millimeter or the nuts on the ends of these, these lock nuts, they're actually a seven millimeter tool, um, are to adjust the tension or, or and, and to uh, adjust any, make, make any adjustments on the actual lift itself. Do not adjust those, okay? They are preset. Those are there to adjust the tension on that spring. If you tighten those up, it will tighten this string to where it will not move and it will end up breaking the string. So please do not adjust these, okay? Leave these alone. If you ever see any stretching in your, in your synthetic rope, um, after a long time use, it might do that. All you simply have to do is untie it, tighten it down a little bit, and then tie it back up. Um, I would recommend just leaving it as it is. Like I said, I build all these myself by hand. Um, they're all preset and pre-adjusted. You're going to see some micro switches on this um, right here and right here, and those are to stop the slide once it goes forward and backwards. Another thing I want to point out is you see all these kind of indentions, and notice the recesses on all the screw mounts where the bed mounts to the actual kit itself. All these areas right here, these channels are there to run your wiring for the winch or for lights, stuff like that. And I'll kind of get into that in a little bit once we get the bed kit further on or maybe in a different video, but we'll address that at some point. Um, you know, the mounting points for the actual bed kit are going to be right here. These three holes right here, those are going to mount to the frame and they'll be backed up by the rear bumper and those are that's what you'll thread those into. So um, that's the main kit, um, everything you see there. And once again, this does run on 3S power as we stated on our website um, and we'll get into that further, but it is does have to be on a 3S power, okay? Next, we're gonna grab our bag full of accessories. Now, as I already mentioned, this kit has been enhanced since our V1 kit. So we'll go ahead and get all this fun stuff out of here set this to the side now first i'm going to start with some of the basics these little deals right here are your rear body mounts since you delete the rear body mounts whenever you run the bed motorization kit because they're attached to the headache rack you're going to need something to hold the back of the body down so that's what these are notice they come apart in two pieces i'm going to show you where these mount on the chassis here in a few minutes uh, but one thing i want to point out on these is you see the little bitty holes and the little divots and these little rings where those go you can use ring terminals and a screw if you want to make uh, your body kit, your, your magnetic body kits, also do your wiring for your lights. You can actually run them through there where the poles just touch together, um, the two screws with little eyelets, and that will make it to where you don't have to unplug any wires. Um, you'll see this slot right here in the back with this eight millimeter right here, and that's what's gonna attach it to the body. So these are your rear body mounts since you delete those with the headache rack. Next um, is the cover for the headache rack, okay? Once we um, get rid of those body mounts, um, you're gonna have a circuit board that's exposed right there for all your lights. Um, in the V2 kit, we in included this one. It's got a nice little 110 rod shop logo right there on it, and this will bolt on and cover up all those electronics. Next is gonna be your screw kit. Now there's a whole bunch of different screws in here, and once again, once we get into the install, I'll show you where all of those different screws go. Um, next, we're gonna have some zip ties. Those are to hold the harness to the chassis. I'll show you how to route all that. Um, we're going to have these plates right here. Now these are something new on the V2 kit. These are frame guides. Um, they're not really necessary. Um, you don't uh, typically need them, uh, but I wanted to put them on there just to give it a little bit more stability um, once the slide is all the way forward and I'll show you where all those go. Um, next we're going to have these brackets here. Now these brackets are for the short shock mounts. Um, these are because on the V2 kit, we delete the tall shocks and we put these shorter shocks in here. These actually add a lot more stability to the whole truck as it is when you're towing vehicles with it being so top heavy and so tall. Um, so that will st uh, stabilize the suspension a little bit better. And these brackets are there to help uh, mount those to the chassis rails and make them nice and solid. So I will get to those and show you how those go on here in a few minutes. That's pretty much everything that's involved with and that comes with the kit um, to do the basic install of just the bed kit. So I'm gonna set some of this stuff to the side, kind of push it over there, and then we're gonna grab the truck. All right, here we are with our Traxxas Ultimate Hauler straight out of the box, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and get all of this plastic off of this thing. Once again, this is a brand new rig, so I wanted to show you 
straight as it comes, okay? So we're gonna pull those two body clips off, go ahead and get some of this saran wrap off here and expose this beautiful body. These things are always really nice. For, for a Lexan body, they're pretty thick. Um, I like them. Um, I hope they offer them in different colors here before too long, but I mean, you can never go wrong with that black and the black chrome, but we're definitely gonna make this thing a lot cooler looking. So we're gonna go ahead and set some of that stuff to the side, you're not gonna need that. Next is going to be uh, starting to tear the truck down. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this plastic off of here, kind of get it out of the way. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of modifications to this truck. Um, it's gonna make it super cool. I love these trucks, but they just don't look like a scale tow truck, right? The dual wheels in the back, they're gigantic. Um, you know, they're just not that street scale tow truck. If you're gonna go off-roading with it and pull cars around with it, for sure. But as advertised on the box, they got a hot rod on the back of it. And to be honest, there's no way you're getting a hot rod on the back of this thing without the bed moving, right? So let's make that bed move. Now, first things first, uh, I do want to point out that this is a newer released uh, tow truck. I just got this one and it does come with the Traxxas winch already installed. And so we might have to uh, make some extensions on that, on the wiring on that. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's not really hard. We don't include a wire harness extension kit in our kit yet. I'm not sure if we're going to. Um, it's not a relatively hard thing to do to be able to put those winches back on there and extend the wiring. I'm going to show you a real easy way of doing it. So um, I'm going to go quiet for a second and we are going to go ahead and start disassembling the bed. Um, if you'll watch where I'm taking it, I'm going to start by taking all these screws out here and taking the screws out of the side to get the whole bed right off the truck. Okay, now that we've gotten most of the original bed stripped off the truck, as you can see, I fast forwarded through most of that and kind of took it off really quick. I don't take these entire gas tanks off the side. I just try and take that bolt off so that I can kind of push them down to get to that. I did switch to a power drill with a two bit, a two millimeter bit in the middle of it because there are a lot of screws, let's face it, okay? So we want to try and keep most of these screws organized. You're going to retain a lot of these screws, but there's going to be a lot of them that will be uh, left out um, unless you want to include them with your old bed and the frame that uh, or your, the old framing for the bed that was on it before because we're not going to retain any of this framework as you can see right here um, the only parts that we're going to keep off of this is of course the lighting so um, we'll pull that light harness off of there here in a second when we get closer to that point um, one thing I do want to point out uh, we will retain the rear step piece of course this will bolt onto the kit afterwards once we get the bed and everything put back together like it was okay now that i've got all of the bed taken off and i've kind of cleared it out you can see the frame rails back here you can see the rear tail lights um, that section is just going to stay over there we may get some of this stuff out of my way like i said you're going to retain a lot of these screws you will reuse some of them um, but there is going to be a lot that you're not using anymore okay so we'll get this stuff out of the way all right now let's go ahead and start doing the rear shocks so because we're going to go ahead and do this kit uh, this is going to be a multi-stage build on this vehicle and eventually it's going to get to a point where we have the single axle in the back with the portal flip kit uh, for now since we're doing the bed kit and this is primarily the main thing that i want to show because it's a big seller and not everybody does the full conversion uh, so I want to show just doing it as if you just bought the bed kit, okay? So we're going to keep all four shocks, both axles, and I'm going to go ahead and put the shock relocation kit on it. So I'm going to start taking off the wheels. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get those shocks, use them on a different project, whatever you wanna do with them. We're gonna go ahead and get those out of the way. Okay, 
Now, that being out, like I said, you want to be careful. These are going to pop out, I'll try and pop out on you, those lower links. Okay, drop our bolts over here. We're going to go ahead and get this last bolt out. Now, I am using a power drill, but that's because I'm trying to do this quickly. So, if you don't feel comfortable using a power drill, by all means, do not use a power drill. Um, especially whenever you go to thread all this stuff back in, is when you... Uh, when you go to thread it back in, if you haven't doing it with a power drill, you do take the risk of stripping out some of this plastic in here. So, as you can see, we've got our um, all of our shocks off now. We've got our shocks off. Um, our lower we took our, our lower mounts off right here, so we've retained all four of those screws. And those are going to be your longer, like these are uh, 30 millimeter style screws, and then uh, we can go ahead and start getting our other shocks prepared and get those put on. Okay, now when we go to put these shock mounts and these shock kits on, what we're going to do is, if you notice in the kit, there's a left and a right, okay? So right here we have the two, these are going to go this way and forward, so these are the two passenger side, some people call it the drinker side, and then these two are going to be for the driver side or the captain side. And these are going to go over here like this, and we're going to bolt these on, and then we will put the shock on. Now notice how I'm sticking them under the chassis rails to leave the chassis rail exposed all the way through. Okay, that's very important. These do not go on here like that. A lot of people want to set them on here like that, but they do not mount like that. They mount from the underneath like this okay so we're gonna go ahead and we got to pull these two screws right here on this brace and it's gonna make that brace completely loose but that's all right we'll get some screws right back in it okay now this is where you're gonna want to get your aftermarket screw bag out Okay, because there's going to be some stuff that we're going to need in our hardware kit. So first off, we're going to pull this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull all of the M3 nuts out of it. There should be six. Set those over to the side for right now. We're going to pull these longer. I think they're uh, M M3 by 18s. We're going to pull those those out, and those are going to be mount the shock to the actual. Uh, chassis rail and then we are going to pull out the M3 by 14s there's going to be six of those and if you don't know how long an M3 by 14 is you can always just take them out and uh, measure them with a ruler right there's going to be some M12s in here too and that's why they're they're kind of close to the same size but they're noticeably different you'll see once you pull them apart so we want to get those M12 separated and then you're going to have some M3 by 8 countersunk screws and those are going to be for the bed to allow for more clearance on the uh, everything sliding underneath it so we're going to get set those to the side and then we got all of our M12s to the side now all of these M12s are for the shocks okay so we're going to go ahead and get those put those to the side now we can go ahead and start mounting all of our shocks on these situations right here. Now, like I said, you're gonna run the, the 18, which is gonna be this size, and it's gonna go through here to mount the shock onto the actual body itself, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get our four shocks out. Okay, now we're getting ready to do our shocks. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the shocks on there. Remember, like I said, the, you're gonna have four of these uh, M3 by 20s, or they're either an M3 by 20 or 18, a longer M3 screw, and then you've got some M3 by 12s. Um, we're going to use all of those to hold the shocks and the shock mounts on. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get our shocks out. We're going to take our shock mount, and there's going to be a left and right. This guy's going to slide under here. There's going to be a left and right. Once again, this goes underneath uh, just like so. And you're going to line that up. Now, I typically, we're going to go ahead and Get this on its side make sure that your link your lower link is in there we're going to retain our original um, longer m3 screw and that's going to go through the brass side now if you look on the front of the shock you're going to see that flat edge there and then the the more rounded inside the flatter side goes towards the the chassis we're going to put it over there that that spot on there on the uh bracket alex is uh, kind of like a spacer so we're gonna put all that through like so. 
make sure that your bracket down here hasn't moved on you. And then we'll take our two millimeter screwdriver and mount that dude on there like that. It's a little tricky once you when you start doing this because it's going to want to uh, walk all over the place with the links and everything going on. But um, you know you can get it on there. However you, uh, whatever is easiest for you. Go ahead and push that through there, like you can see. Run our shock screw down in there. All right, now and then we're gonna take our two of our 12 millimeter or M2 by uh, or M3 by 12s, and those are going to thread into the upper portion of the shock. Now the same thing is gonna go on the other side. Um, obviously and then front and the back now the only difference is when we get ready to do the back um, we're going to use these m3 lock nuts and secure them on the back side and you can typically do that with your either your four-way wrench that comes with your crawler um, most of us have one of those little bitty four-way wrenches um, we have them in our tool kits like this and it makes it a little bit easier to get it on the back side here than having a nut driver that goes in from the other side so i'm going to continue on and get all four of these shocks done and then we'll go from there. Okay, now I've got all four shocks on. Um, as you can see, however, I don't have this one bolted on and I'm going to go ahead and back this one back out real quick and I'm going to show you why I'm doing that, um, here in a second, but we're going to go ahead and leave those, both this, this side loose. Um, uh, same with this, we're going to leave this, uh, gas tank loose and the storage box loose on this side. And once again, I'll get to that in a second. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep my wheels off, um, during the installation of the bed. But as you can see, we've got all of the M3 nut lock nuts on the backs of these shock mounts here. These are gonna mount directly into your middle support, the factory support there. And we're not changing anything else just yet, okay? Now eventually we'll get to the body mounts and all the other fun stuff. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get the bed on and start securing that down. Now we're gonna locate our M3 by 14 millimeter nuts. There should be six of those, or screws, I'm sorry. And those are gonna mount inside of the back back here, these back three holes. Um, as long as well as your rear bumper, of course. And so before we slide that on, we're gonna go ahead and get our bed kit. We're gonna turn our truck and be careful because you got links that are gonna fall down in the front right there, kind of hang you up on stuff. Now it's super simple to install the bed kit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set the wiring uh, down the driver's side of the vehicle. Now I'm gonna set this on here. And whenever you put this on, you're gonna wanna pull the wiring to the side over here. Don't pull too hard, right? And you kind of set it on. And once you get it on there, you're gonna see the wire, the back of it should look like this. This is kind of awkward, but you wanna make sure that you don't get the wiring caught behind here and in between this actuator. You wanna make sure that the wiring is on the outside of the bed frame right there. And then when you stick your bumper in, it should look something like that, okay? Now for demonstration purposes, to make sure that I can show you how to do this, I'm gonna flip this around. It's gonna look a lot harder than it is. And we wanna make sure that we're lining up these three holes. The beds already should be pretty level. And so it'll make it a little bit easier to line those up. Um, just be careful what you're doing and um, we'll get those lined up and that's what we're gonna put these M3 screws in. Now, typically I would do this with it flat. Um, I'm just trying to show you how it's done and where those are gonna go in. And you can kind of see it just suck up into there. And then you know that it's on there straight and legit. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put another couple screws in here. Um, you can go ahead and put all six, it's, uh, it's fine. Okay, now we've got our bed mounted on to the chassis with three screws in the back, fairly simple. Now we're gonna take our wire harness right here and we're just gonna tuck it real nice and clean up behind the shock um, right here. So that's why we left that lower shock loose on this, this side. And then we're gonna take it, fold it over, and it's gonna go behind this toolbox. There's almost like a channel 
you can see right back behind here and then up back behind the toolbox and then up through this hole above the floor uh, piece that you got right here and it'll end up right here next to the battery tray so once we're good there we can go ahead and put our shock bolts back in the lower shock mounts and then we can also go ahead and get our toolbox is tied back on. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now we've got all of our suspension mounted back on. Our bed kit is mounted on. As you see, it's nice and tight. Um, and now we can go ahead and start putting the rest of our kit together. First, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie the wire harness to the chassis um, underneath here. Now, when you're doing this, be careful and you wanna use existing holes that way you can, um, you're not putting a zip tie on the top of the rail. You don't want a zip tie on the top of this rail right inside here at all because these rollers are going to roll on it when you roll it all the way to the back. Towards the back back here, it's fine because the rollers are never going to go past about this point here. However, you just want to make sure that you're not putting a bunch of zip ties on that frame rail. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on to the side. Now, if you look on the side, there's actually holes in there and you can actually run the zip ties right in through there. And those are going to be the holes that you, there are screw holes there, but you don't have to have those anymore because it's not necessary. So I always run the zip ties through those. And I will show you here one second whenever I am done. Okay. So what I've done is I've zip tied it on this hole right here. Now this is a, a rear screw for the center mount here, um, but you've got all these other screws in there. Um, so you can put a screw there, whatever you want to do. If you want to figure out a different way to zip tie that on there, this is just how I do it. Um, it's not that big a deal. Now in the back, you can put a zip tie in as long as you're back in this part of the frame here, because you don't want, once again, you don't want those to interfere anywhere on top of this shock tower. So anywhere behind this shock tower, you should be good. Um, and then another zip tie there. Now I'm gonna leave this one off. I was gonna put one there, but I forgot you gotta put the, uh, we still gotta put our rails on there. So here in a second, we're gonna put those on. Uh, first things though, I'm going to, um, I guess we can go ahead and do that right now. That might be the easiest way to do this. Okay, so to put these rails on, let's go ahead and grab the rails. That's gonna be these guys right here. We're gonna use some of the M3 by 12s that we pulled off of the original bed to hold the sidebars on. So we're gonna retain those screws, and that's gonna be your M3 by 12s, um, which is just the button heads here, okay? Now the way that these rails work, we're gonna go ahead and plug the unit in. Now, as you can see, I'll run the wiring harness here. The, the module is designed to go in this section underneath the hood right here, to, and it fits damn near perfect inside right there and holds it real nice and tight. However, um, some of the harnesses should be long enough to run it up to the front, um, but we really designed it to go right here to make sure that you still had extra room for another battery if you would like. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip mine around and put it on the front. And then you just wanna make sure that you're guiding this harness to where it's not gonna interfere with any of your servos. And now, when you notice, there's a male and a female JST plug on here. We're gonna go to our auxiliary port that goes to our light module, our little light bank there. And then we're gonna go to our um, battery power output of the XL5 HV uh, power uh, ESC. We're going to plug the female side in there and then we're going to plug the male side into our lights to make sure that we can still power our lights and that also powers the winch. On these newer additions they have that little Y in there to power the winch. Um, so you may be you may not have this it may just go straight from the JST to the from the, this one straight into the light but if you do have the winch addition um, that comes with the winch then you'll be there and that'll just tuck up in there now we're all good there and uh, we are actually ready to power this dude up let me grab a battery real quick okay now i'm going to put my battery in now i'm running a traxxas 5000 mah 3s lipo these are pretty standard easy use you don't have a bunch of drama with them um, I, I typically like them they fit nice and flat in here if you can't you don't want to run a big extended battery pack because as you can see it's very low tolerance there so you want to run this standard size battery pack um, to not interfere with the screw from the bed kit um, once we get that in there we'll go ahead and plug it in you do not have to have the truck powered up for the kit to work. Now, once you plug it in, you will see a little red light inside of the control module itself and your remotes are powered and ready to go. Now we have A and B, which operates the tilt 
of the slide and then we have C and D which operates the back and forward motion. So we're gonna go ahead and test everything. We're gonna slide it back. As you can see, it'll hit that micro switch, go forward. As you can see, you really don't need the guides on there, but I like to put them on there just to make, make sure it has extra stability. We're gonna go ahead and motorize this up, test everything, everything's fully functioning, we're all good there. Let's go ahead and get the, the front guides in. Now, if you notice, you can sit them side by side, it creates an arrow, and that's opposite the way they need to go. You need to make sure that whenever you have them side by side, it creates a V, and when you put them on here, this surface here is gonna get fit flat, fit flat against the frame, and then this side over here, you want to make sure that you're not hanging over the frame. If you get these backwards, you're going to be on top of the frame and your rollback is going to hit right there every single time. So you make sure that when you're putting these on, they are not on top of the frame. Okay, so we're going to remove the screws right here on the back of the battery mount. And then we've already got these taken out and those we're going to put those M3 by 12s back in. Okay, we've got our guide rails on, as you can see. We wanna make it a V and it's just there to help guide these and make sure that once it's all closed and you got a heavy load on there that it will, it will stay where it's supposed to go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lower the, uh, we can lower the bed back down. Now, whenever I take it down, I wanna hear it make it kinda of cinch down. I mean, obviously, it's, it'll, it'll go down until it crunches. So, um, you wanna make sure that it's just good and, good and tight when it, once it's on there, and then you can slide the rack forward. It will forward go until it, it'll go forward until it stops. Obviously, it'll hit that micro switch in the back. That was all designed that way. So, now we've got our kit installed. Uh, we can secure that up there with some double-sided tape. We're gonna flip it around, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the back wheels on the kit. All right, and there we go. We've got our kit on. You can see how much stiffer the rear is now than the front, um, and that's to add more stability whenever you're turning so it doesn't uh, flop as much. Um, obviously, we don't have any sway bars or anything like that. So uh, primarily, the kit's pretty much installed at this point. Um, we're, we still got a few more things to, to finish up on it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put our rear body mounts on right now, and... Then we can go ahead and get the body mounted and then we'll work on the bed and everything going there. So let's get the rear body mounts on. Now, once again, we're gonna use the, the lower portion here. I'm gonna go ahead and motorize this bed back. So y'all can see what I'm doing here, but we're gonna get in here on these rear mounts and these are just gonna go straight right there on top of them, right? With the magnet to the back of the truck. So we're gonna take them out and put the screws right back in. All right, now real quickly on this, um, I wanna show you now that I've got this mounted, um, you can see where you've got screw holes right here on the, the, the top side of the mount. Now once again, if you put a little eyelet there, you can connect your wiring for your lights on your uh, truck to make it to where the pin, the pole, the screw from this side, when it sits on top, it makes contact with this lower screw and put your other wire in here. So you're basically splitting the wire, you're running in, you know the positive and negative in here and then you hook the same corresponding wires to here whenever they touch and the magnet pulls them together then it automatically closes those contacts and creates a wireless body mount right so when you unplug it you don't have to worry about plugging these wires back in because it can be kind of a pain because they're kind of short so that's why we decided to do it that way and we designed it that way just by adding those extra two poles if you will So we're gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, now you can see where we have the rear body mounts positioned on here. Now, if you notice, I still have those eight millimeters. We're gonna go ahead and pull those screws out. They're M3 by eights, I'm sorry, when I say eight millimeters. So we'll pull those two screws out. Now we're gonna set those there. Um, I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape real quick for our front mount. Okay, now that we got our control module double-sided tape to the front of the vehicle here, um, we kind of routed our cabling through here to make sure that it's nice and clear of everything. Um, we've got both of our rear body mounts, the lower portions of them secured. 
And then now we're going to put them on our top. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave the eight millimeter screw out. You're gonna slide the body down and make sure that you're getting it inside these channels properly on the side by the gas tanks. And once you get it in there, we're gonna just mark those holes and put the eight millimeter or the M3 by eight millimeter screw into the back of the cab, like so. So those will be mounted on there. And as you can see with the wiring, you can actually take those and I designed it to where, like I said, you can cut the wires and run each wire onto a screw there and then put this plug on the screws down below here and then plug it right in there and then you never have to unplug it as you to take your lights off. So pretty handy. Um, and then we can set that back on here, make sure that our cab is locked into that channel good. All right, still good on the front, still good on the, on the bed kit. Um, can go ahead and take this back forward. All right, now we're going to set the truck aside for right now and we're going to go ahead and get the bed and get it ready to put back on the truck. Okay, first things first, we're gonna take our supports that you see here. Now I've already gone and clipped all the zip ties off and taking the two screws that take this little circuit board off of the actual um, supports for the original bed. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these and toss these to the side. Now as for the, the wiring, you're gonna need to uh, extend this around and I will show you how to do that um, here shortly and show you uh, what I've done on my vehicles to make the lights and stuff still work. First though, we're gonna grab our bed. Now as you can see, I've simply just put the four corner screws back into the bed to hold um, this rear piece on and then the headache rack on. You can still see my, my uh, winch is still loose in here. So we're gonna leave that just like that. And once we get this back on, we're gonna flip it upside down. Now you can see where the winch and the lights plug in. Now this is obviously not gonna work um, because once we start moving the bed all over the place, it's gonna, it's gonna bind up the wires and then we're gonna have a real problem. So what I will do is I'm going to take my lights and my wiring here, okay? Sort this out and we're gonna put so that's the light plug and then this one's going to, so you've got the two light plugs for the headache rack as well as the, uh, the winch, right? You got the plug for the winch. So as you can see, we have put on our headache rack cover. Um, just use two of the M3 by eight countersunk screws that come with the kit. Um, and that will cover up all your wiring up there and make that nice and clean whenever it's motorizing up and down. And then of course, you're gonna remove these, the old uh, rear body mounts and get those out of the way and you'll retain the four screws that go to that. Now, when it comes to this wiring, you really have to just extend out the main power wire um, and then also the main one for this. What I will do for the lights is I tie them together here and then I will simply make another plug that extends here and loops back up to the front of the truck. Um, that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. Rather than having the two plugs here, just connect these two plugs together and then extend this harness out and run it towards the front of the truck. Once we get it all mounted on the bed um, in a different video when we're doing the light kit, I'll show you how I wire these up for a final light. But that's the gist of it. You're just gonna plug them back in there and then route them down the centers where they're not gonna interfere with these screws and then you should be good. Same way with the winch wire, just gonna run it backwards all the way and then you'll feed it through and I'll show you where to feed it through once we get connected on there. But for right now, uh, we're just gonna leave those disconnected and we're gonna get the bed mounted back to the truck. All right, we are almost done, okay. So now we're going to get this back on here. And once again, remember I, I left channels underneath here for you to be able to run the wiring through without it crimping down on the wiring and causing any kind of issues like that. We're just gonna kind of tuck that stuff in there for right now. And then this, go ahead and motorize the bed back, make it a little bit easier on us. I'm gonna go ahead and angle it up first. Now when you go to put this on, it will just simply snap over all the existing spots. Go ahead and take this piece of foam out. You don't need it anymore. In the front of the bed and that'll help that drop down. And then all of these should line up on the sides here. 
and you can look down in here and see that these are all lined up on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and motorize it back down. If I can get the right button there. Okay, now I'm gonna take my new M3 by eight countersunk screws and I'm gonna use those down the middle of the bed. Let me scoot this back over here to where everybody can see. All right, now it's gonna take me a few minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this but I'm going to get all of these bed mounted screws put back in. Okay, now we're going to get our truck and we're gonna go ahead and get the bed mounted to the truck. Now you will still have some M3 by eight countersunk screws, um, these shorter ones, and those are gonna go along the edges here and then the longer factory ones are gonna go down the center still. It's very important because otherwise your screws will interfere with the uh, bed rack system and on the rails. So make sure that you put the shorter M3 screws on the outside edges. Okay, now that we got our bed assembled, we're gonna go ahead and get our bed and put it on top of the truck, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and motorize this back a little bit. Um, we wanna make sure that you're using your M3 by eight screws, the shorter ones, because it will interfere if you go too far into these. Um, you can use the other screws, you just can't tighten them all the way. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're doing that and then make sure that you're not pinching any of your wires down underneath here. 
Um, and then this should just kind of snap and fit on top like so. Should go on fairly easy. And then these uh, parts right here, these countersunk screws will fit back in there. And then we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna go through and we're going to tighten, uh, go ahead and put all of our small screws in, uh, in the bed, get that going down. Okay, uh, once we get all those screws back on, we're gonna take our uh, M3 by, I believe the 12 countersunk and get all of our side screws put back in. Okay, now that we have all those screws back in place, we're gonna go ahead and we'll motorize our kit up here. Now I'm just gonna tuck these wires in right now for the winch and the lights. Um, just temporary until we get ready to wire those up, but typically you would just put your winch screws back here and here. And like I said, we're gonna get to that wiring whenever we get ready to do the entire wiring kit. And I'll show you how to attach all of those wires here. Um, and then we're gonna, you've got two screws that go on the front up here. Go ahead and get those back in. All right, so that secures our winch pack on just for temporary. Like I said, we will get into the wiring on that uh, once we get ready to do the wiring on the entire truck. Uh, but other than that, the bed kit is installed. Uh, you might need to make some small adjustments. There shouldn't be anything really needed um, other than just uh, making sure that you understand how to work it. Uh, you slide the, you can go all the way back with the version two kit. As you can see, there's no shocks here, so we can go all the way back. And then once we raise it, we also have another 40 millimeters of rear travel on this kit versus the, the Gen 1 kit. And so as you can see, even with the stock height truck, our approach angle is really, really good and it's not too steep. Um, and a lot of people were concerned with that. We ended up making another 40 millimeters. Now, once we do our portal delete kit on this and we do our single axle conversion kit, it's gonna drop this bad boy down even lower. It's gonna make it that much more scale and really be the ultimate hauler. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, so uh, thank you for joining us for our installation of our bed kit for the Ultimate Hauler. Um, like I said, we're gonna continue this series with all kinds of different fun accessories for this truck um, to make it look really, really scale and just like a really awesome, sporty looking uh, Traxxas tow truck. We've got our bed widening kit, all kinds of fun stuff. So we're gonna get into more of that, but thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please email us or hit us up on Instagram or so, uh, Facebook, any of the social medias, and we can try to answer those questions as fast as we can. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we're gonna get back to it.